With most of the edging work done, we can now start filling in some faces. From here on out, there will be way less time lapsing than in the previous episodes, unless the process is mostly repeated. If you feel the edging stage is too much work or too difficult for you, I included a blend file that has that stage done. And you can just open that up and take things from there. You should find that blend file in your project resources called Edged Step. Now let's start filling some faces and start working on the first guide mesh. As usual, we'll start with the front section. We're going to start things off by switching the images to the front view of the core. So on the top left here, I'm just going to use the arrow keys to slide to the front view. Over here, I'm just going to press N and switch this image to 102. And in here, I'm going to switch it to 103. And finally here, I'm going to switch it to 104. All right. Now, if you guys are not sure what keys I'm pressing, you can take a look down here and that should show you what keys that I'm hitting at the instant. So I'm going to take this mesh and go into edit mode. Let's take this vertex here. I'm going to press E and an X and extrude this all the way to the left until it merges in the center. I'm going to add in an extra vertex in here and then slide it to the right like that. I'm going to take those two vertices and move them down to about here. We're going to align them in these two images we have here because that section is not visible in this extra two images. I'm just going to press G and then Z and move this up to about here. And I'm going to move both of them in the Y axis to about there. I'm just going to move it in X slightly and move it in Y slightly to the back like that. Now if we take a look down here, let's go ahead and add in a subdivision surface real quick in here. And then let's set the level to level 2. Now you can see this edge is now following the curved edge we have on our image right now. So what I'll do is to go into edit mode and then slide these down just a bit more to about somewhere here like this. I want to slide this to about somewhere there like that. Maybe we slide this down a bit more like so. And that should be good. I'm just going to use the loop tool space on this to even this out. Now, if you guys don't remember, we assign this to a key on our keyboard or on our mouse, just so we don't have to come in here every time to try and then space it out. Mine is the mouse button four. I'm going to space these ones out equally as well. Very nice. Now, I'm going to take one and then two, and I'm going to press F to fill in those faces. And for now, let's disable the subdivision surface modifier. Now, I'm going to add in six extra vertices in here, like this. And I'm going to take this one and then slide it down to about somewhere here. Now, let's just align this on the curve in both images we have here. So we're just going to press G and Z and move this up. I'm just going to take this and then move it in the X slightly. Maybe move these in the X just a little bit, not so much. Now let me just move this out just a bit. Now I'm going to make sure the space is between these. Now note I'm not selecting the one below. I'm just selecting it from here all the way to there. Now I'm going to use the loop to space function to make sure the spaces between them are equal. I'm just going to take this vertex here and move it in just a bit like that. I'm just going to move it up in the Z axis here. Very nice. I'm just take this and then move them in just a bit more. Now I'm going to select this vertex here, hold on control and then left click on this one. I'm going to press E and then X and extrude this all the way to the center until it merges. Now I'm going to take one, two, three, four and press F. I'm going to take these two and press F. I'm going to select this whole edge here, including this vertex down here. I want to make sure the spaces between them are equal. I'm just going to add in four extra loop cuts in here. And I'm going to take this one and then slide it to the right just a little bit, just so it is aligning with the vertex we have here. Now let's take this and then align it in here a bit. Now I'm going to take one, two, three, four, and then press F, and then take these two here and then press F all the way to the right. I'm going to take one, two, three, and then I'm going to press F, take these two, and then press F all the way to the top. Now let's get out of camera view and get to the side view here. I'm going to take these edges here 
and then define them except for that vertex at the end here. I'm going to define it a bit better by getting to the side view here and then moving it up slightly to follow that curvature. I'm going to do the same things with this ones over here. Let me just bring this one down just a little bit. Now if we take a look at this image, you can see the hood kind of bends or slightly curves to the top a bit. It's not flat like we have it right now. So that's what we're going to try to achieve right now. To do that, we're going to select this edge we have over here. We're going to start with this edge. So we're going to select that whole edge and then make sure that the active element is the one at the bottom here. So the white selection of the vertex here indicates it's the active element. So with that done, we're just going to hit period on our keyboard and make sure we have active element selected as our pivot point. I want to press S and Z and then scale this up just slightly like that. I want to do the same thing for this one. And we're just going to do this all the way to the left. Now let's get to the side view and see what we have. Looking good. Okay, so now we can continue filling in the faces. So I'm going to take these four vertices here and then press F. And then I'm going to take these two vertices and then press F all the way to about here. I'm going to take this vertex in and slide it towards the one on the right until we have it to about some point here. I'm going to select this whole edges and then apply the loop to space function on them just so they are evenly spaced out. I'm just going to take this one and then slide it out just a bit like that. I'm just going to apply the loop to space option on them as well just to make sure the spaces between them are equal. Now let's start filling in some faces up here. So I'm going to take these four vertices and then press F. I'm going to take these two and press F all the way to about here. I'm going to add in an extra loop cut in here and then get to the side view here so we can define that curvature a bit more. Because right now you can see it's flat. So I'm just going to press G and then Z and move this up and then G and then Y and move this out just a bit like this. Maybe a little lower like that so we have that curvature going. Now let's get back into camera view and out of full screen. I'm going to add in an extra vertex in here as well, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing for this. So I just raise the vertices next to it a bit higher so it follows that curvature a bit more as well. Now let me just take this one and then move it in the X just slightly. So we're now going to add in two loop cuts in here. Now I'm going to take one, two, three, four, and I'm going to press F to fill in a face. I'm going to take these two and then press F to fill in a face. I'm going to add in a loop cut in the middle here and let's get to the side view here so we can define this as a curvature as well, like so. I'm going to take these two vertices and press F twice to fill in that face. I want to take these two as well and then press F twice to fill in that face. Now let's get back into our camera view. The next area we're going to be filling is this headlights area over here. We're going to be filling the faces we have all around the headlights we have in our images. But before we do anything, we're going to add in extra vertices to define the curves we have in the corners like this area and in this area here before filling in the faces. So let's go into edit mode. Now this area here, I'm going to support with maybe four vertices. So we have one here already. So I'm going to add in one over in here and then slide it about here and then add another one in here and then move it back or in the x-axis to about somewhere here. Let me just slide this one down a bit more. Let's get rid of this vertex for now. Now I'm going to take this and press G and then Z and move this up to about somewhere here. Let's zoom in in this area, make sure we're doing things right here. So I'm just going to slide this up a bit more, just slightly, like so. I'm going to take this one and then slide it towards this one a bit like that and move it down. And move this up a bit like that. I'm going to take this one, slide it back to about some point here. I'm going to slide this up a bit, slide this up a bit, slide this in a bit, and slide this here a bit as well. I'm going to get to this area here. Let me take a look here. I'm going to take this vertex and let's slide it to where the cut line is. So to some point here like this. And then between this vertex and this vertex, we want to have say like three vertices to define that curvature a bit more. So I'm just going to add one more in here. And now let's take this vertex, hold down control and select this one. I'm going to apply the loop to space function on them just so the spaces between them are equal. 
I'm going to make sure we have five vertices in this area as we do right now. I'm going to take this edge here, so all of these vertices, and make sure the spaces between them are equal by using the loop tool space function. Now let's get back to this area here. Let's define this curve we have up here. I'm going to take this vertex and move it in the x axis just slightly like this. Now I'm going to slide it down a bit more to about some point here, maybe a little higher. Now I'm going to add in an extra vertex up here. I'm going to add one more up here as well. Press G and Z and move this up. Move this up slightly as well. I'm just going to slide this around to define that curve a bit better. So something like that. I'm just going to add one more in here. And then make sure the spaces between these ones are equal just by using the loop to space function. And I'm just going to move this in the x-axis a bit to align with the image. Let me just take this vertex here and then slide it onto the cut line right here. Now I'm just going to zoom out. So let's take the vertex from here all the way to here. Now let's extrude it down in the z-axis to about some point here like this. Now I'm going to take the one down here as well. Take it from here all the way to here. So I'm just going to ignore the fact that there's a headlight in this area and just assume it is seamlessly flowing from the bottom to the top, right? So I'm just going to extrude this up to about somewhere here. And then let's switch this image here to the side view. So what we're going to do is to press Gen and Y and then move this in to about somewhere here. Now I'm going to take this vertex and then slide it out to about somewhere here. Now make sure the space between this and then this. The edges we have between them, we're going to make sure the spaces between them are equal by using the loop tool space function. I'm just going to take the edges here on the right side and extrude it in the x-axis like that. Now if you take a look at this front image here, you can see we have it over here. So I'm just going to press G and then Y and move this to about this point right here. I'm just going to move it out just a bit more like so. I'm just going to press G and then X and move this out to about somewhere here. Let's move it out a bit more to about there, like that. Maybe a bit more in the x-axis. And in the y, just a little bit like that. So we have it somewhere there. So we want to, we want it to extend beyond where the cut line is, just so when we go on and then create the panel for it, the shrink wrap modifier would work exactly as we expect it to. All right, now I'm going to take this vertex and then slide it up to about some point here. I'm going to take 1 and then 2 and then press F. I'm just going to add in two vertices in here. I'm going to press G and then Z and move this down to about somewhere here. Now I'm going to take these two vertices and then press F until the whole face is there is filled. Now you can see here we have a bit of an issue. So what we can do is to take the vertex from here all the way to here. And I want to press S and then Y and then scale this out to about some point here. Let's scale it back just a bit more. So I'm just going to press S and then Y and then scale it to about somewhere here like like so. Now this is just guessing game. We don't really know where it is. So we're just going to just try and guess where we think it should be. It's going to be, I'm going to say somewhere around here like this. Now let me just take the ones here. And I'm just going to press Gen and Y and then move this in. Move this one in as well. And then take this one and move it in just a bit like that as well. I'm going to take this, press Gen and Y, move this in a little bit. And take this one, move this in just a little bit. And finally, we take the one here and then move it out just a little bit like that. Both of them. Now, if we should get out of camera view, we can check and see if everything is okay. All right, I think I'm going to fix this area a bit more just out of camera view. I'm just going to move this out like this. Take this, move it out a bit. Just going to move this one out a bit till we have something like that. Maybe I move this in just a little bit like that. I'm going to move this in a bit more, so to about somewhere there, like this. I'm going to move this in, move this in a bit. Let's take a look at what we have so far. Now, let's try and fill the rest of this area we have here. So what I'm going to do is to take 1, 2, 3, 4, and then press F. I'm going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, and then press F. And that area is done. Now let's get out of camera view and see what this is looking like. Alright, I think we have to fix this area a bit more. So I'm just going to take this vertex, 
I'm going to move it in the Y axis just a bit like so. Very nice. Maybe slide this one down a bit. I'm going to take this one, press G and Y, move it in a bit like so. And that's looking good. Very nice.